Mr. Speaker, I'll withdraw my point of order and rise in opposition to the motion to recommit. The reservation is withdrawn and the gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to talk uh, for just a moment as colleagues, not as Republicans or Democrats, not as members of the majority or the minority, but colleagues who are blessed to serve in the United States House of Representatives, the People's House, with all the tradition, with all the history, with all the laws that have been passed, with all the lives that have been impacted. I want us to talk as colleagues because our foundational document gave us, as the House, unique powers and responsibilities. We run every two years because they intended for us to be closest to the people. The President was given different duties and powers. The President was given the duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. So my question, Mr. Speaker, is what does that mean to you? that the laws be faithfully executed. We know the President can veto a bill for any reason or no reason. We know the President can refuse to defend the constitutionality of a statute, even one that he signs into law. We know the President can issue pardons for violations of the very laws that we pass. And we know that the President has prosecutorial discretion as evidenced and used through his U.S. attorneys. Mr. Speaker, that is a lot of power. What are we to do when that amount of power is not enough? What are we to do when this president or any president decides to selectively enforce a portion of a law and ignore other portions of that law? What do we do, Mr. Speaker, regardless of motivation when a president nullifies our vote? by failing to faithfully execute the law. How do we explain waivers and exemptions and delays in a bill passed by Congress and affirmed by the United States Supreme Court? How do we explain away a refusal to enforce mandatory minimums that were passed by Congress and affirmed by the Supreme Court? And why pursue, Mr. Speaker, immigration reform if presidents can turn off the very provisions that we passed. You know, in the oath that, that brand new citizens take, it contains six different references to the law. If it's good enough for us to ask brand new citizens to affirm their devotion to the law, is it too much to ask that the president do the same? If a president... If a president can change some laws, can he change all laws? Can he change election laws? Can he change discrimination laws? Are there any laws under your theory that he actually has to enforce? What is our recourse, Mr. Speaker? What is our remedy? Some would argue the framers gave us the power of the purse and the power of impeachment, but Mr. Speaker, those are punishments. Those are not remedies. What is the remedy if we want the executive to enforce our work? This bill simply gives us standing when our votes are nullified. This bill allows us to petition the judicial branch for an order requiring the executive branch to faithfully execute the law. Mr. Speaker, we are not held in high public esteem right now. Maybe members of Congress would be respected more if we respected ourselves enough to require that when we pass something, it be treated as law. Maybe we would be more respected if we had a firmly rooted expectation that when we pass something as law, it be treated as law. Maybe we would be more respected if we put down party labels and a desire to keep or retain or acquire gavels and picked up the history, the tradition, and the honor of this, the people's house. Mr. Speaker, the House of Representatives does not exist to pass suggestions. We do not exist to pass ideas. We make law. And while you are free to stand and clap when any president comes into this hallowed chamber and promises to do it with or without you, I will never stand and clap when any president, no matter whether he's your party or mine, 
promises to make us a constitutional anomaly and an afterthought. We make law. Expired.